Okay, so I mentioned before uh, establishing a baseline for our young dog. So during pre-teething puppy work and early adolescence, we are um, doing a diagnostic process on the young dog. So we're working that dog, developing certain aspects of his personality, but we're also looking at that dog and trying to decide where's this dog coming from? What's going on with this specific dog? What do they like and don't like? Well, one of the chief factors in that diagnostic process is the dog's genetic biting style, meaning the biting style is highly heritable, meaning what the dogs do with their mouth when they're biting is uh, inherited behavior. And we can manage it within certain parameters, but we're not gonna change it radically. We're gonna change it in small increments. And under stress, dogs tend to do what they wanna do genetically when it comes to how they use their mouth. And so we need to define this dog's genetic biting style. What do they like to do with their mouth? So I can tell whether I'm reinforcing them or stressing them through my behavior. So if I see changes in their genetic biting style, then I might, determine from that, if it's paired with me putting stressors on the dog, that uh, the dog's uncomfortable in some fashion. And so I need to change what I'm doing. And when they bite the way they naturally bite, they're telling me I'm comfortable, as it were. And so what we want to do is determine what kind of style we have. And so from breed to breed and bloodline to bloodline, this is very different. And so I break it down into some basics. And one of the basics is I call it a a pusher, a kind of driving in biter, a dog that when they're happy continues to push forward even though their mouth is already full. You see this a lot in Belgian bloodlines and especially Belgian Malinois bloodlines because the Belgian ring sport favors this kind of biting style. So there are lots of dogs from this type of bloodline, especially Belgian line Malinois, that like to bite this way. Um, but you'll see it uh, in a variety of different dogs. I've seen it in Bulldogs and German Shepherds and Dobermans, I've seen it in a variety of different dogs. You'll see this style crop up. It's just more prevalent in certain bloodlines and certain breeds. That said, that dog likes to push in constantly. And some of them do it really quickly, what I call kind of closed mouth regrippers, meaning they go punch and they keep their mouth kind of tight and they punch and they keep their mouth kind of tight. And other dogs are what I call kind of open mouth regrippers. They open their mouth a lot and they do it kind of in slow motion. They want to push in, but they go <laughs> like they're swallowing an egg, right? And so what, one of the things that I want to do, that's a pushing style. Other dogs, especially dogs that are very prey motivated and possessive, frequently like to pull. Partially as a genetic style and partially as a learned behavior. They've learned that if I pull on this thing, I can pull it away from you and get it and keep it. You see this a lot in German Shepherds, right? Uh, not all of them, again, anytime I make a breed generalization, please understand that's generalization and just helps us get an idea. Um, there are German Shepherds that are not like this at all, but you see this frequently, commonly in German Shepherds. They like their equipment, they like to possess, and they have very strong prey drives, and they learn if they pull really hard, they can win, and they get to keep their thing and carry it around and possess their piece of equipment, whether it's a toy or, or a sleeve or whatever, right? And so those dogs tend to have a tendency to bite down and then pull back, right? So if my dog genetically likes to pull back, uh, that's fine. I don't have to worry about that. But if my dog's a natural pusher and I start adding stressors and that dog starts to pull, he's usually telling me he's uncomfortable. He's saying, I'm stressed, and now he's, his natural style goes away, and he's offering me something else. So the, our diagnosis matters in terms of determining when that dog's comfortable. You get some dogs that are what I call clampers, meaning they just bite down wherever they are with however much of their mouth they got on the item, and they stay there. So they, if it was their whole mouth, they stay there. If it's the half of their mouth, they stay there. If it's the front of the mouth, they just bite and hold on. So, again, that style, if that's what the dog does and the rest of his body says he's comfortable and relaxed, that's fine too. I want to know that. If I have a dog that's a clamper and I'm trying to encourage him to push in, I frequently make his grip worse in an attempt to make him bite in some way that he doesn't want to bite. Some dogs like to shake a lot. Right? So some dogs like to thrash their head like, and they're, they're shaking when they're biting. Uh, some dogs chomp. They use their mouth. They move their mouth a lot. Right? And in most biting sports, we don't want a dog that moves his mouth a lot. We want him to kind of hold on. But if I try to take a dog who chomps when he's comfortable and make him into a clamper, again, I can create stress for that dog by not allowing him to do what he does genetically under stress. So let's talk about those biting styles again quickly. There's pushing in, uh, both tight-mouthed and kind of open-mouthed regrippers. There's pulling back. There's shaking or thrashing. And there's kind of clampers. 
right? And then there's going to be variations on this theme. Some dogs are not exactly one or the other, but they fall in between these categories. You know, it's a, more of a continuum than it is a, a black and white situation. But if I, while I'm working with my young dog and playing with them, those early sessions of bite work are partially geared towards telling me what this dog does naturally. So I watch the dog's whole body language, and when they're really into it and they appear to be having a good time, how are they using their mouth? And then I make note of this, and I try to channel it the direction that I want it to go, depending on what I'm going to do with that dog. But I keep in the back of my mind always, this dog does this when he's comfortable. And this is a very important piece of the puzzle when we start adding stressors, control, all those things. Because if there are changes in what my dog's baseline behavior is, that's a red flag for me, and I need to keep an eye on that.